Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of the Starberry Vlog. Hey, Dai. Great to hey. be here again. Hey, Dai. So today we'll be talking about uh, valuation leads. I know it's uh, a topic that is important for every estate agent uh, in the country. How much do they cost or how much are estate agents expected to uh, pay for a valuation lead and how do you calculate that cost per lead? So I want to start off by asking um, Ben, how do you calculate the cost per lead? Well, I mean, we typically start off by asking um, a customer what they'd be willing to pay. You know, what, what is uh, the value of a valuation lead? Um, and that would start by saying, uh, you know, how many leads do you need um, to win an instruction? Um, and how many of those leads do you need to actually um, convert uh, into a sale? And so typically um, the sort of conversation that we have is that uh, it, might, it might be for every two website leads, they do get an instruction and for every property that they get instructed on, they, they end up converting to a sale. I think the average um, sale price obviously can, you know, change dramatically, but I think on whole we hear like three thousand pounds is like an average a fee that they can get. Um, so, we, you know, without doubt, somewhere between one hundred and two hundred pounds a lead um, is ending up being a sort of a pretty spot-on kind of price that most agents will pay. Uh, in some cases, you'll get properties, you know, considerably higher, higher value. And of course they'll pay considerably more and you'll get others that have got much lower fee uh, when they, they sell, so they, so they want it less. But that's a really good basis to start on. And then essentially we can start building a campaign around that. Yeah. Nathan, you wanna add something? Yeah, so I just wanted to say that, you know, uh, when you calculate uh, the cost per lead, what we need to really keep in mind is not only how much you earn, like how Ben said, what is the value of the lead, but how much you're willing to pay. For example, there might be cases when, you know, you're willing to pay much more, even though like, you know, the end, the value of that one sale might be less, but it could lead to a future, you know, potential in terms of huge amounts of business much later. So it really needs to boil down to what is your cost per lead and how much are you ready to pay for it? So what happens is we, uh, there are clients who would rather spend a lot more to get more, but others are quite happy with what they're doing. So it all depends on how you really want to grow your business based on that one metric. Yeah, and I think, I think on, you know, we, we should split our leads by type. So if it's a sales lead versus a lettings lead, um, to win a landlord, you know, many agents can see that they um, get renewals year in, year out. And, you know, they may get three years worth of renewals. So even if it just washes its hands, the initial lead, it's still worth it because you then get the two or three years to follow, the fee to follow. Um, so there's, there's these different considerations that need to, need to come into play. Yeah. Um, are there any other uh, criteria um, or elements that make the value of a lead, uh, valuation lead uh, differ from one estate agent to another? Well, yeah, some of the biggest uh, factors that actually, you know, uh, determine the value of the lead is the location. Basically, if it's in central London, your lead value is going to be much higher. If it's somewhere outside London, uh, it's going to be much lower. And then there is always the type of property involved. If it's a small, uh, you know, condo, it's a different thing. It's a small one BHK apartment. And then you have these five bedroom mansions that are available outside London. So it, these are two of the factors that really determine what your cost per lead is. I think that, um, you know, there's, there's a lot that goes into the overhead of the business. So when we do the costs, we're working around our marketing. You're carrying on with your day job and you're getting this many leads. You pull in Starberry. We uh, put, it, put together a digital campaign based on and maybe you know a sort of easy entry level where we don't over uh, commit to too many channels um, but 
we tried to put numbers on, we focus around the lowest hanging fruit um, <clears throat> and ultimately target delivering. You know, if it was fifteen hundred pounds you're spending and we've targeted, uh, you know, one hundred and fifty pounds of valuation lead, then we're targeting 10 leads. Now, the other thing I would say is you don't just turn up, switch this on and it's getting you 10 leads at 150 pounds, you know, week one or even month one. We always recommend a run at it. Um, but what we can confidently say is that when our clients commit, and actually it is a two-way street here, because at the end of the day, we, we don't do the, the final um, conversion to the sale there's, there's, or to the let. There's a whole bunch of uh, influence from the client side here. Um, Ultimately, what we try to do is get quality leads, and that's really as far as we can go. We're saying that we do help with tools and different presentations to help um, them convert more. Um, but I think all of those aspects have to come into to play. And really what you need to do is give yourself a, a proper, you know, I would say three to six months, and you will definitely, definitely start seeing that marketing ROI. I would always say that, you know, uh, the type of lead, like Ben mentioned earlier, is an important factor. We have clients who really struggle, uh, you know, not struggle as if their focus is on landlords, their letting agent. And that's much more difficult to get. So rather than mixing all the leads together, if they have a proper process wherein they can actually determine how much a landlord is worth to them, how much a, you know, a vendor is worth to them, how much a buyer or a, um, you know, a tenant is worth to them it actually makes it much easier for them to determine what their objectives are every quarter. For example, if they have the budgets and they really want to go out and get, let's say, 30 landlords in the next four months, then you know the budget for that needs to be considerably higher because the cost per leads are going to be higher. Well, on the other hand, you know, if they just want to focus on letting out the, the inventory that they have, it, they can actually look at you know, reducing the budget because it would be less and same thing on the sales front as well you know to get buyers it's a uh, sorry it's buyers it's much more easier than to get uh, sellers on board so they really need to figure that out and that will actually help agents uh, factor in their budgets rather than having like a blanket amount all throughout the year yeah and i think one of the things that uh, is the spin off is although you know nine times out of 10 our clients are targeting um uh, getting in new instructions the spin off is that you also get buyers and tenants they just come through if you're running paid uh, paid ads through Google AdWords or paid social or really any activity where you're communicating with your database. You never know who's, uh, we always go for that sort of uh, secondary uh, call to action. We've got our primary one aimed at the sellers and the landlords. So there's a good spin there. I think it's also worth mentioning that you've really got to make sure that your website is in order. So there's no good having a shocking form on your website that just doesn't convert. And it's no good if you don't have tracking in place so that you can actually see whether this is working. So that is all part of the setup that we would be making recommendations. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Nathan. It's a pleasure. Hope it helps. See you then. Cheers. Yeah. See you.